The Covenant Partners and friends welcome you to Voice of Joy Word Ministries. Voice of Joy is a family church, a training center, and a restoring body. We are called to cover the earth with total man ministry. Now for today's message.
Ministries International, acknowledging our founder, Bishop Angela Coleman, our pastors, Vanilla Pittman and Pastor Andrea Selby, and to all of our elders, ministers, deacons, and faithful covenant partners, local and streaming, we welcome you tonight to our midweek service. We have started a message about becoming God inside minded. And tonight I am here to speak on the words of faith coming from the power of God inside you. And my name is Minister Melissa Lawrence. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so excited to be before you all tonight. I always love talking about faith because that's what we have to live by in this time. And that's what our life is all about in Christ, about faith. And it's going to be three components that I want to talk about tonight. First, I want to talk about there are some basics about spirit, soul, and body that need to be understood. The second part, harvest comes after you plant the seed. So plant words of faith. And the next, faith-filled words dominate the laws of death. Hallelujah. Well, first, let's get into the first part of it. As mentioned before, we, I know we have heard many, many times before in the body of Christ that we are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. And that's something tonight I want to expound on a little bit more for us to really understand who we are. We are not our body. Our body is an outside shell that we live in. We're not our soul. Our soul is just our mind, wills, emotions, determinations, and judgments. Those are the, that, that's where our mind goes to. But we are a spirit. We are first a spirit. We are who we are on the inside. That's what God created us to be. We are a spirit. And by knowing that we are a spirit, that's who we are. We are, living, we are living truly in our being because we know that we are spirit beings. That we ought to be led by our spirit. And I call that inside out living. Words of faith are a very fundamental component of the Christian life. I strongly believe that. It's almost like if you think about your natural body. Your natural body has a blood flow. And our blood red cells, white blood cells, it has to flow in order for our body to be able to flow and to be able to grow and to be able to prosper and to keep functioning like it needs to be. And in some cases you might have throughout life some people deal with anemia. And anemia just meaning that your body is not producing the right amount of red blood cells that it, that it needs to flow through your body. So your body might go through different symptoms and things because it can't flow right. Because the blood flow is not right. Now, I mention that because I want to go back to the spirit. Because remember, I just introduced before that the spirit is who we really are. That's who we are in Christ. That's the thing that was you was made in the image and likeness of, the spirit of who God is. And we are a spirit. So I look at faith as being the blood of our spirit. Which means that our faith, the more we build our faith, the more we work with our faith, our blood is able to flow through our spirit. We're able to be full and we're not anemic in the spirit because we're filling it with faith. So if we look at faith as a blood thing, as a thing that we need to live, just like the blood that we need to live in our natural body, so is it the blood that we need to live in our spiritual being, faith. Oh my God, the power. There's so much great power in faith. Faith is a powerful spiritual force, not necessarily felt. I know we want to feel like, oh, we want to feel this and we want to feel that, but that's not what faith is all about. It's just like, if we, it, what, does it take faith to see something that you can physically see? No, it doesn't. But it takes faith to sit down in that substance that you physically see, knowing that it's not going to fall down on you. So it's the same thing, faith. Faith is such a powerful force, but it's not something that's felt. It's a knowing. You have to know. You have to know without a shadow of a doubt that faith is what's, what's driving you. Just like the word says in Mark 11, 24, it says that whatsoever thing you desire, believe when you pray. When you pray is when you exercise that faith. I also had to put down here Hebrews 11 and 6. That it says, and without faith is it possible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Isn't that something in the word? The word talks about faith so, so prudent. They're saying it's impossible to please God without faith. And I just talked about how faith, consider your faith as the bloodline, as the, as the blood source for your spirit. So that means that if we're not operating out of our true selves, and now we're not operating out of our spirit, and, we, and, and, and we're not flowing out of our spirit, that simply means that we're, we're not able to please God because we're not living our true selves. We're not 
living who we were created to be. We're not living in our spirit or from our spirit. We're not living from the inside out. We're letting our soul control something that it never was meant to do. See, our body, again, is just a shell. And our body is going to flow and operate whichever one is it, it, in the lead. Now, if our spirit is growing, our spirit man is, is the biggest point. And our soul has to bow down to what our spirit says. Because then, again, with the faith, it won't be impossible. It is possible to please God because we'll be walking in that faith. We'll be knowing that he exists, not only that he exists, but he exists on the inside of us. Hallelujah. One of the other parts about that is that we, when we pray, we have to forgive. And I know we have heard it over and over again that we have to forgive, we have to forgive. But it's so important. We have to make a practice to forgive. Even if we don't know it's something we might not have thought about. You know, a lot of times before I might sit and say, Lord, you know what, anything I might have thought about, I did, I know of, don't know of, Lord God, I pray for your forgiveness. I give it to you. I repent of that thing and I turn away from it. It's very important because a lot of times we might do things that, honestly speaking, we might not think about, you know, it's something we might need to forgive for. It could be something as simple as you driving down the road. You might have a little bit of road rage and you all upset and you you doing this and you doing that. And there's some forgiveness in it. I say, Lord, forgive me for acting out of character. Because, again, your spirit can't act like that. See, your soul at that point was in the lead. See, you was feeding that soul. And at that point, your soul had grew so big to that point that that, that unforgiveness in it. So even with that, you repent and say, Lord, forgive me for that. Forgive me for acting out of character. See, we have to forgive. And it takes faith to forgive. It's not always easy just to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to forgive. Don't do it. Help cancel. Don't do it just to be saying it. Do it and mean it. Because God knows the intent of a man's heart. He knows the intent of what you do. So don't just do it and just say, oh, Lord, forgive me. And you keep repeating the same thing. But Because all you're doing is recording and not, and, and not actually repenting. We want to repent and turn from that thing. We want to know that when we pray, we do have to forgive those things that we might think about, those things we might not think about. We have to forgive those things. Even the things that might be little, we have to. I can't stress enough about forgiveness. I can't stress enough about forgiveness. It takes faith to forgive. Because you got to think about it. Your natural man does not have the capacity to or the want to to actually forgive. Your natural man, your, your, your natural sense wants to keep going on and creating more and more and more and more situations to build upon the unforgiveness that was a simple thing. So that's why it takes faith to break that down and walk in forgiveness. So we won't stifle what God is trying to do in us faith-wise. Hallelujah. The next thing I want to talk about is there is power in speaking faith with a loud voice. Now I want to talk about when Jesus was talking about Lazarus. That comes from John 11. I'm going to go back to verse 30. Read verse 30 through 43 for context. Where it said, Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She go up unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Hallelujah. Mm. So when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, mm. and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. It also said, Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even the man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, come up to the grave. It was a cave, and stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Saith unto him, Lord, by this time, he saying, he'd been dead for four days. It's been four days. Now I'm getting down to where I want to get to, verse 40. So Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. That was a question Jesus said. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. 
And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And verse 43, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. There is power in speaking faith with a loud voice sometimes. Sometimes it's not about being quiet. Sometimes we got to raise our voice and speak loud. He had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. And it made me think about if your mind is constantly shouting, your spirit can't hear. So that's when we got to shout God's faith and we got to shout his word. He had to say, Lazarus, come forth. And it shut down that mind. It shut down the depth over his body. And we know the story that he came forth. Hallelujah. So he spoke faith and he had to scream it loudly. And sometimes we got to speak it loudly because sometimes our circumstances and our situations crowd our minds and it crowds our atmosphere and it stifles us and it causes us to feel like we're bound. But then we have to speak loudly God's word. Sometimes we can put our own name there and say, Melissa, come forth. Put your name there. Say it. Come forth. Sometimes you got to scream it loudly in order to break out of the funk that your soul try to put you in and know that you are your spirit. Hallelujah. We got to show the power within. And a couple of months or so ago, I spoke about the power of faith. And I broke down acronyms that I want to go back over again because it's so fitting for what we're talking about. About getting the power that's living on the inside of you. And knowing that we're functioning from by our spirit. One of the things I said as the acronym was F, that we have to be fervent. Which means we have to exhibit a great intensity and a feeling of unwavering passion to go forth in faith. That no matter what, we shall be intensified. We must have a feeling of urgency and a war on the inside of us to be fervent with it and have intensity in it and do not waver. Do not look to the left nor to the right, but continue to speak forth in the power of God's faith in his word. We must be aggressive, which means we have to take an aggressive nature, which means that we can't be timid like we're a little cat. We got to be aggressive like we're a big cat. The cat and the cat in our faith and know that we can do and speak what God says and we can have and speak what God says that that mountain has to be moved. Hallelujah. That any death to try to go around us, whether it's physically, spiritually, or emotionally, it has to bow down to the life that we speak. So we have to be aggressive. We have to be aggressive and grow in our faith and develop our faith and to keep speaking. Because as I spoke earlier about how your faith is like the blood of your spirit, that's why your your blood flow has to keep flowing. Hallelujah. You want your blood flow to continue to flow in your spirit, you have to speak. You don't want to be anemic in that area of your faith, but you want to be full and you want to be verbal and continue to reproduce and reproduce even the more of the blood flow of God's faith in your spirit. Hallelujah. I said you had to be intentional, which means you had to be on purpose. You have to be purposeful about your faith. You have to speak. You have to declare. You have to demand. You have to speak. You have to declare. You have to demand. You have to speak. You have to declare. You have to demand God's word in your situation. God's word in your life. God's word in your act. Atmosphere. Hallelujah. You have to speak it. You have to be intentional. You have to know that you know that you know that you know. And you have to continue to go forth in it. Hallelujah. You have to be tenacious, which means it doesn't matter if you're in a tsunami and everything else is going on around you. You still got to hold on. Tenacious means you got to keep firm. You got to hold on. You got to cling to. You got to hear. You got to closely do and believe and speak what God says. Speak. Hallelujah. You do all those things and then you know you can put everything is a heavenly connection. I said H was a heavenly connection. It's a bridge to pull whatever is in the heavenly realm to the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. In a case of Lazarus, death had befallen him. In a case of Lazarus, there were four days when he was dead and then God spoke and when he spoke, he rose again because he caused death to bow down to life. Hallelujah. Speaking in faith and knowing that what he spoke was going to come forth. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray for that wonderful scripture. The scripture we might have said over and over again, but this time I want us to say it with a little more understanding because now we know if we didn't know, we know even the more that we live from the inside out and we are our spirit. It's 1 John 4 and 4. Oh, my goodness. 1 John 4 and 4 says, Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, that's a wonderful scripture. Hallelujah. That's one that you can shout aloud. Hallelujah. You can shout aloud that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, let's just take the time.
time right now. And wherever you at, close your eyes. And we're going to say it three times. And watch the difference that you will see. Greater is he that is in me. Make it personal. Change that you to me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, I bet you right now that your whole atmosphere changed. Oh, when you, every time you said it, you should have felt more of an ease, more of a fight, more of a leaping of your spirit. Because you begin to speak the faith. You begin to feed that bloodline. You begin to get the nourishment that it needed to flow properly in your spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's worth a show. That's worth a shout. That greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That scripture alone will begin to stir your spirit. It will begin to strengthen you. You begin to walk with your chest. Now you begin to have your arm on and stand firm because you know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we just thank God for the faith. Think about when you think. Thinking is an action. Thinking is an action. So let's make sure that we think on the things of God, because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, his ways are higher than our ways, and we thank you, Lord God, that we align our thinking with his thinking. We renew our mind each and every day, because we're not conformed to this world, but it says, be you transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we just thank you right now, Lord God, that we make our thinking be an action to pull forth the faith that we need. Hallelujah, to pull forth that blood flow and that blood life. Hallelujah. Oh, we look at it this way. See, you have to understand that faith Fuels your spirit, man. That means faith is your fuel. Faith is your blood. Faith is your fuel. You say, why I keep saying it? Because if you don't keep saying it, you don't keep speaking it, then you ain't gonna you ain't gonna keep growing. You can't just say things one time or two times or three times. No, because we just talked about the, the acronym of faith. We just talked about you have to be firm. We just talked about you gotta be aggressive. We just talked about you gotta be intentional. We just talked about you gotta be tenacious because you got to be all those things. That means it has to be said more than once. It has to be said continuously. It has to begin to become a blood flow in you. Hallelujah. Oh, even when something might try to go on to throw you off, that will come up in you, that blood flow. So we have to speak God's word. And even if we got to speak it loudly in a loud voice, there are times to do that. So you can shut down your mind and shut down that soul and shut down the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The next part I want to go to, we want to talk about harvest. And how harvest comes after you plant the seed. So we got to plant words of faith. So many of us, in the body of Christ, we know seed time harvest. We've heard it many times before. But let's get a greater understanding of what that means. That means that every seed we sow, there's a harvest that will be reaped. Hallelujah. That means that we can't go walking around the ground, speaking of a ground that doesn't have seed in it, that doesn't have life in it. It has to have seed in it. And we got to put the seed in the ground to expect the harvest to come forth. You know, we heard that little saying in the song, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You got to have something. You got to have something. If you plant an apple seed, you expect that apple to come up. If you don't plant an apple seed and you're expecting the apple to come up, that ain't going to happen because you ain't, do the, you ain't allowed the seed time process. Hallelujah. And during the seed time process, we must understand that we have to water it. How do we water seed that we put in the ground? We water it with words of faith. We continue to speak what we're expecting that seed to be. We continue to go forth in that. We continue to speak forth that because the seed will yield up its own kind. In this house, we talk about how we not, we not only plant a seed, but we name the seed that we plant. Why do we name it? Because it needs to have a name on it. We just don't want to put a seed in the ground and just want to sit there and wonder and wonder what's going to come up. No, we want to plant a seed in the ground knowing that we know what's going to come up. And the good thing about God is he always exceeds our expectations. Hallelujah. You ask me why I get that from? Ephesians 3 and 20, where it says, and I'm going to read the message Bible. The first part of it was that God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Hallelujah. That means that the seed that we sow, we're going to sow it for the purpose we sow it for, and then God's going to turn around, and then he's going to multiply it even more. You know, it's funny. I, I made me think about in my yard at my house, we're coming off a winter of the summer, so therefore we got to nourish that ground. We got to nourish that grass. So we begin to put some food feed fertilizer on the grass. And because with that fertilizer, we expect to receive green grass. 
And when we dropped it on the ground, we started noticing every day our grass would just patch up and grow and grow. And I mean, it's growing like wildfire every week. We, grew, we cut our grass but just throughout the day. We water it, again, because we have to water it. We water it, and thank God we didn't have a lot of rain here lately, so that's watered it. And we just see the grass just growing. But the very interesting part about it is when we look, we say, wait a minute. Not only is the thing that we sold the, you know, the food for our seed until the ground is coming up, the green grass, but then we begin to see yellow flowers. And we begin to see white flowers. And like, where that's coming from? Then we begin to see mushrooms coming up. And we sit there thinking, my God, we're supposed to just bring green grass, but yet it's bringing up all these different other things that we didn't know was locked in the seed that we sow. It's the same way God is. See, we don't sow our seed. I call that I call that the expected. I always say, you know, the expected unexpected, which means that we planted our seed to expect green grass to grow, and we got that. But the unexpected part was God turned around and gave us more than we planted our seed for. Why? Because God is a God where you do your part, he's going to already pull out what he has done. He's always, the seed is always the smallest thing, but within the seed is so many things of harvest that can come forth. So it's why it's important that we must water our seed with faith. Do it for what we expect, and God's going to bless us with the expected and the unexpected. He's going to always exceed our expectations. That's just what it says in Ephesians 3 and 20. And reading the second, the latter part of 3 and 20 where it says, he does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently within us. That's the message version. The King James Version says, according to the power that worketh in us. Now we're talking about power of God inside of us. It's only going to work when we know and function and flow by our spirit and know that's where that comes from. So seed time harvest. I put that right obedience yields right harvest. Hallelujah. That means that I have to be obedient to sow. That means that if God has said for me to sow a certain thing, don't sit there and debate and question what God told you to do. Because if we go back to that scripture, we delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That means that anything that pops in your heart to do, God placed it there for you to do. He just wants you to do your part. So he can go into your storage bin with your name on it and your life and pull out the harvest that it was meant to pull out. Hallelujah. I know. Think about it. Your barns be filled with plenty. God already held your full barn with your name on it. And we just got to simply be obedient. Hear from him and do and sow what he told us to sow to reap that harvest. Hallelujah. And it's so important that what we speak, we better make sure the source we're speaking from is right. Because as I mentioned earlier, every seed has a harvest. But we want to make sure that the seed that we sow is producing the right harvest and we're speaking the right thing. Hallelujah. Because I want to go to Proverbs 18 and 21, which is actually going to lead me into my latter part, talking about faith-filled words. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, that means that there is death and there is life in the power of the tongue. So that means that what I name my seed, what I speak on my seed, or whatever seed that I place in the ground, that means that the harvest is going to come forth for it. So that's why it's so important that what we speak, we better make sure it's the source that we're speaking from is right. That we have right obedience when we're sowing our seeds so we can reap that and yield that right harvest. That we make sure we clearly understand what we speak. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. One of the things, our last section was talking about, we're talking about how faith-filled words dominate the laws of death. If you speak on yourself sickness, sickness is going to come. If you speak on yourself health, health is going to come. Amen? Does that mean that your body don't go through things? No. We're living in a pandemic right now. But you follow the laws, you follow the principles, and speak God's word. You shall not be touched. You shall not be moved by it. Because God's still going to bless you. Because you're living from the inside out and you're following and listening to what he tells you to do. We have to follow the laws. We have to, we have to follow the rules. Because God is about laws. He's about principles. He placed them here. So he's all about it. Hallelujah. We got to walk with the authority that's on the inside of us, which means that we have to speak the right things. You go to the doctor and they say, well, you have this. No, I don't have this. My body might be going through this, but I'm 
diagnosed. You say to yourself, but Lord, I'm diagnosed with Psalms 91. For you say, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. You say, with long life shall I satisfy you and show forth thy salvation. We don't look at the circumstances and the diagnosis of what the body might be going through because the body will submit to whatever is in control. And if your spirit is in control like it's supposed to be, then it has to submit and it has to be healed in Jesus' name. You speak the word of yourself. You see, know that God is your shepherd that you shall not want. Hallelujah. That you know you are the heal with long life. That you diagnosed with Psalms 91. Hallelujah. Be diagnosed with God's word. Because you got to understand we can't change the laws and we, and we can't change the word. And the devil, we can speak words of faith and faith will move mountains. When we speak it, it has to move. When we believe in speaking, it, it has to move it. It has to shift it out of the way. Hallelujah. So it's so important to make sure we understand what we speak. And it's so important to make sure that we are speaking. Because if we choose, we can either choose to speak life or silence will speak for us. So if we have any circumstances and situations that might be going on and we want to be in our own pity party and we want to sit there and feel all down, guess what's talking? Silence is talking. Because speaking is always going on. But we gotta open our mouth, just like it was with Lazarus, and begin to speak loud to shut it down. And to make sure that what God spoke is what's gonna prevail. That we live by our spirit. We are a spirit being and we shall live and flow by our spirit. Hallelujah. It's so important to understand that in this time that we're living in, that we have to be obedient and follow his word. I think it's so important to understand that we've got the thing, the whole thing about Christianity, the whole thing about being in God, the whole thing about living by our spirits, we got to understand that it's about relationship and not about religion. It's not about a building. It's about you and your relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. We can't be about the problem. We got to be the problem. We got to be who God created us to be. He created us in the image and likeness of him. We are a spirit. We ought to have a relationship with him. Relationship causes growth. Relationship causes our atmospheres to shift. Relationship causes the faith to grow. Our blood out of faith to flow so mightily in our spirit. That's what causes the flow. Hallelujah. It's so important to understand. It's so important to make sure that we speak life over ourselves and not death. Life. We don't want to be physically dead before time. We don't want to live in this world emotionally dead. We don't want to live in here spiritually dead. But we got to understand that we can speak life and speak it more abundantly and God will give us everything our heart desires. He will begin to go in our full form with our name on it and begin to pull out those things because we did our part to speak and we did our part to sow seed and we did our part to be obedient and we did our part to do everything that he had us to do and then therefore we will reap everything that he has us to reap. Hallelujah. One other thing I want to end with, uh, back on December 31st, several of us had an opportunity to share a word that God gave us for the year 2020. And I just want to share a part of it, because I think it's important in this time to always keep our eyes on the word of God and he speak. Because God is always speaking, but sometimes we're not always listening. And we got to learn to open our ears to listen. And we can only do that because it's an internal thing. And part of what I spoke was that the eye gates of the heart be alert. And let your spirit speak this year. Let the inner man lead you and guide you. For 2020 is a vision of the spirit. Clear vision. Clear director. The year of revealing. It's aligned with God's divine word and purpose. So determine that your spirit, your inner man, the real you, will be the main speaking fighter this year. Open your heart, the internal mouth, and speak God's purpose. Determine that God is God no matter what. Don't speak what you see, but speak what you seek. Hallelujah. That's what I leave you all with tonight. I cannot stress it enough to know that God is God no matter what. Go back and meditate on that scripture. 1 John 4 and 4, where it says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Shout it out like he shouted and Lazarus come forth. Cause everything that's dead around you to live again. Let it be in this time that we know, that we function, and that we flow with the internalness of who we are, living in Christ, and living from the inside out. In Jesus' name, God bless you all.
know you were blessed by that powerful message tonight. Take the time to share it with someone. And now it's opportunity time. This is the time where we give to the Lord. The scripture declares in Luke 6 and 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosoms. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So take the time out and give tonight. Be a blessing, amen? I know that you've received something good that you can take through your week, all right? So we have several fields of giving. We have first fruit giving, and that's our best, our first, our highest seed, all right? And then we have tithes and offerings. We can give into our missions, our building fund. We have step out seed, Solomon seed. I tell you, many fields to give in all to the glory of God. You're giving into good ground tonight. So we thank you for sowing. You can go to vojword.com and go to our Givelify app and click on the link. It'll be a simple process. Thank you so much for sowing into VOJ Word. And now we're going to pray over that seed. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for those that have given tonight, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, for multiplying the seed sown, Lord. Thank you for the things that they're standing for, God. And we call them done tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. You're tuning in this streaming opportunity, and you don't know the Lord. We want to offer you that opportunity. I tell you, God wants you in his family. He loves you so much. For he so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come on into the family of God. It's simple. Hallelujah. God made it so easy. Glory to God. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Come on, just say, Father, I need you in my life. I'm tired of living the way I've been living. Lord, save me. Help me tonight, Lord. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I want to be, Lord God, with you. I want to be with the family of God. If you said that in, sin in sincerity tonight, then God has done it in you. You are saved. Hallelujah. Share it with someone. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, heaven is rejoicing right now when one person comes in. Hallelujah. And I'm rejoicing with heaven. God bless you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We bless you. Father, we thank you for your people, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for ministering life for a prosperous and wonderful week. We give you the glory and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for streaming in tonight.